So folks, um, we're doing something a little bit different this this Sunday because uh, yeah, we failed to go to the cinema this week, so we haven't actually seen anything new. <laughs> um, but with Thor Ragnarok coming out pretty soon, and with us both being massive kind of Marvel fans, we figured we'd actually talk about superpowers this week and kind of what our favourite superpowers might be, and if we could have one power. What would it be? But this was such a, like, a big topic. Um, we decided to kind of break it down or try to break it down a little bit into, uh, smaller segments. So we've got, we've, we've got 10 powers that we're going to quickly go through. And then at the end, we'll kind of, yeah, talk about what our superpower would be, I guess. How do you feel about immortality? I do not feel like it's something that I would want. No, <laughs> I'm not. The, I'm not a fan, really. I don't know why anyone would want it. Why wouldn't Why wouldn't you want it? Because the world's a bit crap, really. <laughs> Can't really imagine being in it forever. I mean, I mean, there are arguments for not wanting to not be in it, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, would you really want to live while everyone else was like coming and going, and you're just there forever? Also, I have never understood this. Who decides at what point you become immortal? As in, what do you look like? How old are you? Why do you grow to be like 30 and then you just stop? Do you that's, know a I mean? very, that's a very I good point. Ridiculous. Would you be able to choose? Or are you old forever? In which case, that's terrible. Wouldn't you just be like an immortal sperm or egg? <laughs> Is that well, that, that also might be That's like the like other extreme. Like, I mean, like, you're an old person <laughs> forever. Like, you're a, can you imagine being a baby forever? That would suck. Well, that would completely suck. Immortality does not appeal to me at nope. all. As much as I would like, as like one of my biggest regrets in terms of mortality is that you know technology and the human race is advancing so fast and knowledge is is is, is growing and developing so exponentially quickly that who knows what the world can be like in a hundred, two hundred years? Like what strange, wonderful things we would have created then? I kind of want to see that. No one is going to be here. In you know, what if we haven't years. nuked one another? Literally, already. no one will be here. <laughs> so pessimistic, though. Like I, I, I like I, the, the optimism. Kind of like provides interest there. How can there. you think though that people are going to only have done good technology? There's I don't, I don't think they're only going to have good technology. 3D printing guns all over the shop. I don't, I don't think they're only going to have been... Everyone will have nuclear power. I'm not saying that. Either. I'm not that naive. I'm just <laughs> also... I, I don't believe that we're ultimately doomed, although it's really easy to be cynical in this day and age. Well, but I also don't want to see the people that I love die while I have to live on. Like well, They say okay. like the worst thing is for like a parent to bury their child, right? Imagine doing that for your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, your great great grandchildren. Also, would they know who you were? Would you just like that? Would be super weird. And then at one point they'll be the same age as you, and then they'll start getting older than you. Will they know who you are. <laughs> will you be like, hey? Uh, but also, like our entire relationship to this world is defined by our mortality. Like we have a finite period of time between when we're born and when we die, and everything that we do is inevitably tainted slash associated with that. Like things are more exciting because of our mortality. Our time. Time becomes precious because it's limited, right? Like, if we have infinite amounts of time, we'd get fucking bored. It yeah. would be really bad. Like, well, yeah. The first hundred years would probably be great. I could just go live in all the different countries. That'd you be could. really fun. Would... I'd go learn all the languages because I'd have all the time. This is, That's the only time be cool that would stuff. be okay. Like, I'd be able to read all the books and watch all the films and play all the games, but at some point, like, you'd lose touch with humanity. Yeah. It you'd would lose suck. touch with. It would suck. You wouldn't be able to relate to people. At all. Basically, immortality sucks. Mm. What's next? <laughs> I think it's important to define what invulnerability yeah, I was means. Say, what exactly Because there are so that? many different ways we could take this. Um, we talking Luke Cage invulnerability, as in skin that can't be cut. Yeah, are we talking impervious to pain slash harm, um, but might be able to, like, for example, drown. Like if you're cut off from oxygen. Do your, do your, can your insides be harmed? Is it just your exterior? Is it like an invulnerable shell? I don't know. I don't. I don't think I really get what it is. Because unless you're Luke Cage and like being shot at a lot, why? What in like practical terms? How would it help you? Well, I mean, you'd never stub your toe. What? But you would. It just, it just wouldn't hurt. I just don't. I don't know in real terms how it would help me in my life. Like unless you're gonna be a superhero, and therefore you need to like basically have a permanent bulletproof vest. Mm. Like, I don't really see the point. So that's a really good point. Like, you have to almost become a superhero because you're specialised, you can't get harmed. Yeah. But, and this goes back to our cynical worldview, 
people would find a way, and this happens in Luke Cage, uh, or more specifically, actually, Jessica Jones, people would find a way to turn you into a weapon. Yeah. <clears throat> and people would create weapons specifically to take you down. Like, as soon as you ascend to that kind of level of superhuman, you become a massive target, which would suck. Which is kind of stupid, because then you're trying to help people, but then you're inciting people to greater violence and making new weapons at the same time. Which isn't great. This is not great. This it's isn't going well. Negative talk. It's supposed like, to be like <laughs> This is making us <laughs> despair at the world. I don't know, I just think that's a really bad superpower. Invulnerability. Yeah. Thing is, invulnerability, you're right, is only really useful in conflict scenarios. Oh well, yeah. Um I mean you can you could rescue people from a burning building. Well actually I don't know. Because although, you know, your outer skin might not burn are your lungs in, still invulnerable? Like, are we talking complete so. body invulnerability? Well, I think a bit pointless. Are we talking about but complete body? But then you're body, almost like, basically immortal. But this is it. Like, you still, you still, your blood cells would still need oxygen, right? Like, you'd still need yeah. oxygen. So there must yeah, be some I mean, parts Cage, of you that Luke would be Cage, kind of vulnerable. His inside can get hurt, can't it? Because yeah. he does get shot. Like, it does. Because it's just his skin. It's just his, like, yeah. muscular layer. His muscles are just so dense that yeah. he gets superhuman strength and also it's just impervious things just bounce off it but like yeah. with enough kind of shock trauma yeah um yeah like the, the, the bullet to the yeah, head yeah I mean it the, goes the, yeah. just the force of that is still enough it doesn't puncture his skin but it's still enough to rattle his brain into a coma mm-hmm. so but this is the thing like I, it would be good like rescuing rescuing cats and, and people from burning buildings would be really useful yeah in I mean in war zones you could go in and, and rescue injured people um so you'd be a good rescue unit. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a lot to be said for that. <laughs> Which is really cool. Maybe like, it would, it would really help, like, fire departments, um, people like the Red Cross going into dangerous places, yeah. rescuing people. Yeah, I still think could, the government would find a way to lock you up and I'm turn sure you into a weapon. Would. I'm sure they would. Mm. <laughs> okay. Well, this one should be more cool. I think there's, there's more scope for this, no? Be very good at hide and seek. You'd be very good at hide and seek. Would you be able to like turn it off and turn it on? I think you. Well, I don't think you'd be permanently invisible. Well, well, this is it. Like, <laughs> well, that would like, be so crap. Can you imagine? That would you'd be have, that would like, be awful. No it's like, can you see? No one can see me. That would be horrible. You'd basically then how would you be born? You'd basically be a mortal po- poltergeist. But how would you have been, literally been born? <sighs> well, they know you're there because of the blood splatter. <laughs> Oh, what? <laughs> let's say I you don't could know. turn it on and turn it off. Let's say, let's say you <laughs> could it's turn like it an invisibility cloak, but you don't have to actually put it on because it just happens when you want it to. That'd be great. You'd be really good at snowball fights. I oh, know. I think invisibility could be a little bit freaky. How do you mean freaky? Why? Where did you go? <laughs> I was here the whole time. <laughs> Okay, that was a little bit freaky. That was, was pretty freaky. <laughs> I don't think you'd have to click your fingers, though, would you? Because <laughs> that would be a bit annoying, because then everyone would know. So here's my big question about invisibility. So are you in- just you? If it's just you, you can't ever wear any clothes if you want to be invisible. What? Why? Because why would the oh, clothes be clothes invisible? Be invisible? Unless you're projecting an invisibility field, so anything that you touch becomes invisible, but does that then extend to, like... The floor, if you're standing on it barefoot, is there a patch no. of floor that becomes invisible? Because this, so this is the thing. I think it would just have to be you. You would have to be no, invisible. No, it have to be you and your clothes. No. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Why would your clothes be but, invisible? They're normal you, clothes. If you if your clothes, if you can't wear any clothes, then there's no point in being able to switch invisibility on and off because you'd either have to go and get changed, you'd have to go into the bathroom, leave your clothes. But that's it. Like and then this, what? this is what I'm saying. Like I, mean, I don't what? think. I don't think you can. I, I don't think you can have invisibility that just extends to your clothes because that's ridiculous. I think you have to. It's a superpower. But that doesn't make any sense. Why? What? How else is it going to be? You can't just be walking around naked in case you want to go. You're invisible. invisible. No one's going to. No, but this is the thing. Like, if, yeah, you, if, if you're know. visible, obviously you have to. You have to respect the rules of society. So you have so to, you have to be clothes. at home, and you have to be like, oh, so today I'm going to go out invisibly. And then you have to get naked, and then you have to leave the house. No, think about it. It's just like it's like Superman, right? So Superman, when he's not being Superman, is Clark Kent, and he's wearing normal clothes. But when he's Superman, he's got the Superman costume on. But in order, he can't walk around in the Superman costume all day as Clark Kent. So he has to wear normal clothes. So he has to find when he wants to turn into Superman someplace to 
put his clothes. So oh, that's basically, effort, though. but that's it. Like, but these, these, this is the practical. When we get onto flight, we're gonna have to talk mm-hmm. about air traffic control. So, oh. like, this is this. These are the practicalities of having superpowers in a modern world. Where would you put your clothes? You'd they would lose be invisible. Clothes. Well, you think about it, like in. Sp- oh, you never saw Spider Man Homecoming, did you? No. No. There comes a point where Peter Parker has to stash his clothes and he puts them behind a dumpster and then they're gone uh, the next of time he goes back gone. there. But that's the thing. Like, that's a real thing you have to consider if you had this superpower. It's like, if I want to be invisible, I can't find someone to put my clothes. Although, as an invisible person, you could probably rob banks pretty easily. Yeah, <clears> you're <throat> right. You could rob a bank. But, okay, so I have a question. So, in that scenario, for example, if so how would you be able to switch it on and off? Is it something that you could do accidentally? Because if you were robbing a bank and then you sort of <laughs> inadvertently became visible again and you were naked and, you know, halfway through robbing a bank. Also, that would be really, like, really awkward. Like, you've got the swag bag and then you're just free bowling. But also, what? how would it work? Because everyone would be able to see what you were doing because... What are you going to do? Just like come and open the till this is it. and then take money out, which is then moving by itself. So I think... I, I think people would notice you. <laughs> so this is it. I think I think, it's, I think it's got to be either you're invisible and therefore if you pick up an object, it looks like it's floating, which would be a really, <laughs> really good way to freak people out. And you can make a lot of money out of basically what, having a ghost train house. Thing. That's what happens with Harry Potter though, isn't it? And his invisibility cloak. Yeah, exactly. Um, or... Anything that you directly touch also becomes invisibility. So in that case, yeah, so then you have your clothes. In that case, it would be clothes. But mm-hmm. again, if you're standing on a floor barefoot, no. does that count? Well, then you just have to not go barefoot. You have to wear shoes with no socks, so your shoes are invisible. But ah, these are things you'd have to think about. I don't know. This makes it more effort than it's worth. That right? makes it a lot of effort. Yeah, that sounds like. Also, quite I'm just not. I'm not. I'm not a huge. I don't think invisibility would be that great. They'd be quite lonely. Yeah. In a world where everyone's clamouring for attention, thanks internet, mm. does anyone really truly want to be invisible? Discuss. Probably not, no. No, I don't want to be invisible. Nah. Nah. What's next? I'm going to say I'd be quite a fan of Super Strength. Yeah. Although, as, so as a large man, I can say wholeheartedly the things things already fall apart in my hands so having super strength I'd have to be even more careful and as like a big dude with quite a high centre of gravity and no real coordination I can I can say that I don't think super strength and me would go together necessarily as well as I'd like it to because of my huge clumsiness maybe you wouldn't be clumsy though maybe because you'd have to be able to turn it on and off like you'd have to be able to control it really well because otherwise you just break everything well, this is what I mean. So, 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 so maybe, it would, maybe it would come with you being able to control it properly. So maybe it would make you not clumsy. Well, I think, uh, I think, I think, I think you'd have to train. <laughs> I think, I think, I think the crucial, the crucial thing with this would be to have it almost from birth, because I think yeah. that way, obviously, you learn. It's, it's, it's easier to learn things when you're younger, and I think you'd be able to learn that control a lot better. Then, but who would teach you? What would your parents say? I don't know. <laughs> what would happen at school? You can't just rock up to school and be super strong. I think with this one, the, the with great power comes great responsibility line is really <laughs> quite pertinent because yeah. you'd have to. This is the, but this is the other thing as well. You have to constantly check yourself well, before yeah. you wreck not yourself but other people. And I mean, like every every interaction with another person, like you'd have to watch your temper really badly as well yeah. because, yeah. And I mean, you hear horror stories of things like roid rage. Would that be something? Roid rage? Yeah, when it's like, you know, people who die do strength enhancing steroids, like muscle enhancing steroids, go absolutely nuts and occasionally do some very, very tragic things. And I wonder, like, would that be something that, would that come with the super strength? Would you get, would would it be like a Hulk thing where you're constantly angry? (laughs) As a, like, I don't know, that, I hope not. I do think super strength would be really useful in some cases. Yeah. You could, you know, take a door off its hinges. Without having to open it, you could just walk through it. <laughs> so we're going to get Great. on to actual flight. But, so Jessica Jones, for example, she doesn't really, in the TV series at least, she doesn't really fly. She just jumps really yeah. high as a result of super ridiculous strength. But Luke is also really strong and doesn't do that. But that's because he's also incredibly heavy. Yeah, okay, because of his yeah. muscle density. So I would assume that actually, so it would be re- it would be quite important to consider like what kind of super strength you'd want. 
I yeah. guess, because there are different kinds of muscle as well, like lean muscle versus like over muscle. Would you want that kind of versatile strength that allows you to kind of still be pretty normal, but also break a door down with a flick of your finger? <laughs> but again, you'd have to be able to control it because you wouldn't want to break every door down that you tried to walk through. No, you would not. So, I mean, it'd have its pros and cons. What we're establishing so far is that superpowers <laughs> might actually be like more trouble than they're worth yeah. at the moment. <laughs> I'm thinking that. I'm not really excited by any of these. (laughs) (laughs) Which is kind of weird. (laughs) Oh, man. This one might be pretty cool. Flight is probably the most appealing one. save a lot of time and money. I wouldn't have to commute to work. Well, you would, but you'd be able to do it, like... Yeah, and fly. From high. It'd be great. Yeah, I wouldn't have to go on the train. You'd still have to share the sky, though. What, with everyone else that could fly? Um... (laughs) Well, with planes... I don't uh, think I'd fly as high as planes. I think... Also, I like planes. But you'd have to... Like, to fit into today's world, you'd almost set... So you'd have to out yourself as a superhero, so there'd be no living in secret, because people would be like, what is that? Well, Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Ali. She's flying again. (laughs) And you're like, stop it, you have a control. They're like, hey, Ali. (laughs) So I think you'd need to... So just so you, people didn't freak out, like unidentified object, you are in foreign airspace, out. we will fire upon you. Have I can you see that seen happening. Seen every film though that anyone ever says that they're a superhuman or superhero, and everyone hates them. Like you wouldn't want to just be like, "Hey guys, I can fly," and everyone's like, "Okay, Ali, just like wait, wait, it's you," <laughs> and you know, we'll just let you go. Uh, I think scientists, I don't think that would happen. Scientists would come with their knives. Well, exactly. That's a horrible. <laughs> No, what is that? That's well, <laughs> don't say it then. <laughs> I'd quite like flight. I'd quite like flight. I think I'd. Pr- I think I'd. Although I think I'd. I'd I hate like wasting time. Would yeah. you prefer teleportation to flight? Ooh, maybe. Because I get quite chilly. And it's quite cold. The sky up there. would be quite cold. Yeah, yeah. you'd have to wear like thermal you underpants. Get, you might get birds pooing on you. I think you're probably more likely to get birds pooing on you from the ground. Yeah, maybe. Um. That's not a reason that would put me off flight. Uh, although, like, accidentally, like, steering into a massive flock of them... Yeah. ...could well, be pretty you bad. You just have to watch where you're going, but... <laughs> yeah. No, but, yeah, no, I think flight definitely out of the one so far. Definitely my favourite. Flight's cool. The thing that worries me about teleportation would be that if anything is remotely out of place. Like, it would have to be perfect teleportation. Yeah, otherwise like, you get splinched. Like, half of you teleports and... Oh! <laughs> oh no. That is splinching. Yeah. Right, what's this? Like, running? Or... Yeah, like, so so this is kind of like the flash, I guess. Like, you're really... You can run faster than the speed of light. Um, That'd be cool at Park Run. That'd yeah. look up Ego. Is it not almost the same as teleportation, though? Kind What's of. But, like, no, but... Do you still need a clear, we've seen, a clear route? But as we've seen with, like, Quicksilver in, like, X-Men, you know, like, Days of Future Past, where he does that amazing thing where he's just, like, flicking bullets down. And, like, you see, you could... There's, yeah. there's, like, a, there's like, a protective thing. You could move people out of harm's way very quickly. You mm-hmm. could... Just because something... It, like, it, it completely changes cause and effect, right? Because just because someone fires a gun doesn't mean that their bullet is going to hit wherever the gun was pointing because now you can change but you can just take that bullet out of thin air because you're mm. faster than the bullet yeah from a from a laws of physics standpoint it doesn't make any sense it would be really weird <laughs> like I don't know where the sort of kinetic energy would go uh, but also my, my question is that if I wanted to run to work say and get there really fast do I need a clear route to work do I need to run along the pavements the Flash like, is able to steer tourists. himself really fast he's also able to run up buildings because he's so quick that the force of the like the force of his vo- like his velocity outmatches gravity. Mm-hmm. Well, that would be pretty cool. So that 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 could be really awesome. But then, what do you do at the top? Do you just climb a building, like run up a building when you want to climb it anyway? Yeah. So like or you can just so like, instead of instead of using a pavement, you just run up and down buildings. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's not like you've got a meeting on the fifteenth floor, so you just run up the outside and like knock on the window. Hello. No, you, you you could feasibly do that as well. <laughs> Although if you stop. If you stop yeah, at the window, happens. you're going to fall back down. So you have to keep you have to keep moving. You have to run through the window. So you can tell them when you're going to arrive, and they can leave the window open. Yeah. And then you can sort of like do a, like one of those rolling things on the floor. Yeah. And like then a, rock up to you a mean, meeting. You mean like, roll? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be a way to make a dramatic. That entrance. would be a great way to make an entrance. Um, yeah. 
I can see Super Speed being like I always, I always think that the Flash <laughs> is a bit of a impression. shit superhero, but I kind of think actually that Super it's Speed might be one of fun. the least. We, 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 yeah, it, it's the, the lesser of yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, that's what yeah. I was trying to get yeah. out of yeah. my mouth. So. <laughs> um, yeah, I can see it having very positive applications. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is. This seems like the laziest superpower. <laughs> what? Because you just do it because you can't be bothered to move. <laughs> yeah, just moving things with your mind. I'm gonna be honest. I don't, I, I don't. Yeah, I think the novelty would wear off though. Why? I think it's like a smart it's really device. Really convenient. It's like a smart device. The novel, the novelty would, would just wear off after a while. But why? It would be like such a life of convenience. You never have to get up. Well, you, you would. You still have to go do things. Yeah. But if, like, you sit down and you're like, oh, I forgot my book, or, oh, I forgot my, I don't know, little glass of water or something, it would save save time in those situations. Well, it would, if you have direct line of sight. Because otherwise yeah, you've got to steer it. Corners. You've got to steer it, like, yeah. let's say, for example, so, like, let's say, for example, that we wanted to drink of water right now, and, like, we, it's, uh, like, the kitchen is over there somewhere. Without direct line of sight, we don't know if the glass that we're holding with our mind in the middle of the air is underneath the tap. Uh, and I don't we don't know. You can, you can turn the tap on, can you? Yeah, you can turn the tap on. Yeah. No, you can turn the tap on. It's got a movable part. You can spin that shit. <laughs> and then you turn it on, get the glass, bring the glass, but the glass could smash into the wall. And then you've got to, then you've got to yeah. clean that up. And then, I mean, you can do that with your mind, but. Yeah, that would be a bit boring. That sounds more exhausting than just going and getting a job like, <laughs> manually. Um, and also, so my, que- my question with telekinesis is: Does telekinesis does the does the kind of like the feet of it or the size of the job, should we say, is that equitable to physical exertion? So, if I'm trying to move like a lorry, is it going to take a mental toll that is equitable to like? the physical effort of trying to move a lorry. You're right. It would just be really lazy. It would literally just help you on a lazy level. It's really good if you're working in construction or you're like, you like, you're, you want to build a house. Yeah. It'd be really good for house building. Um, yeah, you could build loads of houses. Yeah. Like really quickly. But of course, you'd still need to buy all the materials. But you'd be able to build the entire yeah. thing without any construction machinery. Which yeah. Would make, so it would be a lot cheaper. Which would, you know, it would make your neighbours happy. Yeah. I guess. Well, you wouldn't have paid for as much manpower. Exactly. It'd be super cheap. There's that. And quick. Also, with telekinesis, I mean, I keep going about guns. Because this is the thing, a lot of these superpowers, I guess, have the most pertinent like, capabilities when it comes to, like, conflict and stuff. Although, perhaps yeah. that's cinema. You know, well, probably. Maybe that's, just, maybe that's just the way cinema's presented this stuff. But, you know, well, you I don't could, think anyone's ever done a film about having a superpower in real life. Presumably you could that throw people. Boring, Presumably but... you could actually move people with your mind as well. <laughs> which could be but really that would be fun. hilarious. But the novelty of that would wear off, that especially really, for everyone really else. Wear off. <laughs> um, but it would mean no one no one would ever mess with you because you'd just be like, whoop. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, that would be quite fun. Um, other question, actually, mm-hmm. when it comes to telekinesis. Would you be able... Would this be a kind of, I guess, mode, method of flight, in a way? Because if you could levitate other objects, can you levitate yourself? Maybe. It wouldn't be very fast, though, would it? No, I don't, I don't, I don't imagine it would be much. I, uh, yeah. But I'm not sold nice, on telekinesis. Nice leisurely moving yourself. Yeah, exactly. I'm not leisurely hover. It could be fun. I'm not sold on this. No. 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 Okay. What's next? <laughs> This has some seriously, <laughs> seriously dodgy ethical considerations, yes. as you know. We've both seen Jessica Jones multiple times. Kilgrave is a really creepy, really creepy villain. Um, played outstandingly by David Tennant. Played outstandingly, uh, but yeah, I don't like. I don't like this one at all. I, I wouldn't want no. this at all. No, um, because I think. I think it would be all too. I think I think you could start off with the very, very, very best intentions. And this is the thing: if you're able to use this even sub, like even accidentally, it ruins your whole life. Not to mention the lives yeah. of countless other people. Like if there's if there's any chance that you can 
that you can somehow deploy this in a fit of emotion or anger or rage or anything but or anything even <laughs> positive, really. Like, you're taking worthy of the free will of others and that's... Yeah. I, I don't think this one's going to take that long. Like, no. Nah. Well, I mean, Kilgrave says it himself, doesn't he, when he says how carefully he has to choose all of his words to make sure that he isn't controlling someone or he never knows if anyone wants to do anything because he never knows whether they're doing anything of their own free will or not. Yeah. Really. Which would suck if you then didn't know whether anyone was ever spending time with you because they wanted to or because you were sort of making them even inadvertently. Yeah. I think it would be, yeah, no, it would be really... Yeah. Because how can you use it for good? Because even if you made someone think something positive or do something positive, they still don't want to do it because they're not doing it of their own free will. So in a way, it's still negative. So I just don't really know how you could really... This, you know. Yeah, this one this one is a... You can essentially become a god and shape the world however you want it, yeah. but... Yeah, the ethical implications of that are somewhat yeah. disturbing, shall we say. Yeah. No, I don't think you can have a good... I actually agree with you. I'm not. I'm not sure. There's there's any way you can be good with this. It's too grey. Yeah. Don't like it. Are the same ethical considerations it like relevant when it comes to telepathy? So being able to see what like or hear what other people are thinking or know what other people are thinking. Well, I mean, not in this. Not not exactly the same because there's no free will problem. I mean, but there's a privacy to... problem. Well, I, yeah, absolutely. But it's not like you can manipulate people. But I mean, you can, in a way, because you have yeah, really you have nice. private personal knowledge that they might not yeah. necessarily told anyone, so you know exactly what they're thinking. Yeah. And that... Yeah, information is power. Right? Knowledge is power, right? So... Yeah. I think this one's a bit dodgy as well. And I also think that sometimes, sometimes ignorance is bliss. Yeah, well, absolutely. And I do think that, like, a minority report goes into this a little bit. There's a difference between thinking bad things and doing bad things. Yep. Um, That's a good film. It's a really good film. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I really, this this one sits quite, un, like, I'm, I'm quite uncomfortable yeah. with this one as well. But I also don't think that you would want it, because why would you want to know what everyone is thinking all the time? Because that's never going to be always good, and it'll probably be completely terrifying. <laughs> it would. I don't. I don't think. I don't think we want to plumb the deepest, depths, darkest depths of the psyches of people around me. Like I, I don't want to know what everyone's thinking. Like I don't. I don't want to know that <laughs> stuff. Like, hey. yeah. You know that everyone has weird dark thoughts. Yeah, that's everyone. Knowledge, <laughs> really. Yeah, everyone's a little bit messed up, right? So, yeah. I. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, no, I don't. I wouldn't want to. Not a fan. <laughs> Not a fan of telepathy either. I don't. I don't think that would be good. No. So we have one kind of last, very, very broad section that I've just condensed down into like one big thing, and that is temporal powers. So we're talking about okay. time. So we're talking about like time manipulation, time travel, anything to do with time would be really cool. I think it would be really, really cool. And also, just the most dangerous, um, well, yeah. like, thing. Because then you've got the whole sort of concept of if you manipulate, you know, I mean, we've seen about time, which is such a good film. And, but changing something, for example, after your child has been born, if you change anything in t- back in time, then you get a different child. You get a different future. Which is terrible. And, Awful and so dangerous. This is because thing. you can do the tiniest thing and change the course of everyone else's life. Yeah, like and like when you if, if you if you even start thinking about quantum realities, like my mind actually just starts melting. Like it's, the, I think I think the trickiest thing with time is that it's something that we don't even really fully completely understand. Yeah, like no. we we don't we don't understand fully how. Exactly how the universe operates in terms of in terms of time and relativity comes close, but like compared to these other superpowers, like we can look at some of these and go quite deep and get really pedantic about the effects that they'd have. With time, you literally don't know. Especially yeah, you're going back in time, you're changing god knows what. You're going forward in time, like 
you're seeing things that you're not necessarily ready to experience yeah. and it's complete fish out of water it's a man outside of time it's potentially mind shattering it, yeah yeah oh man dicking around with time would be so much fun and <laughs> you could get so much done Hermione's time turner is one of the best things <laughs> in Harry Potter yeah. like how many children have sat there and gone oh my lord I could have used that so much you'd be, again you'd be able to do all the stuff um Probably and you'd be not, able to, like, like, taking all the extra subjects that she takes. I don't think there are many children that would necessarily use it for that. Well, this is, well it depends on what age you, but, you have You have this power at, because you could go back, you could go and learn, so you'd learn all the yeah, languages. I I'd learn, learn, I'd learn so languages. much more. I'd watch all the films, I'd play all the games, I'd do all the I would I'd also all read all stuff. the books. That would be so useful. Um, because managing yeah. your time is, well, is, is one of the fundamentals of life, right? Yeah. And I think this, this gets around the, the immortality thing about... Um, because time, time marches on when you're immortal. You, you don't have a fixed point where you can do a load of stuff and have it all affect the present, which is kind of what everyone wants. Like, everyone wants to be famous or rich when they're young, right? So they can fully enjoy that sort of thing. Um, yeah. So how, it's okay, so how would this work in this situation if you knew you were about to die, as soon as you got old and you were going to die soon, and then you went back in time to, to get more time in your life? But do you still carry on aging while you're travelling through time? So could you feasibly die while you were time travelling? Or do you just come back to the present and be that bit nearer to dying? This is one of those things, like, are there... When you go back in... If you go back in time, do you re-inhabit your you in that timeline? Mm. Or are there two of you in that timeline? Which at which you point, can avoid You yourself. can never meet. <laughs> this is the yeah. thing, like, like, they always say... Like, whenever that happens, it's kind of like, you can never meet yourself. Yeah. Um... Although they, they break that rule in the Star Trek reboot because Spock meets himself, which is so weird. Well, also Looper. <laughs> yeah, Looper. You have two people in the same timeline. So we don't know. I have no idea. Because <laughs> I, I think that if you... There, there are some things that would make it problematic. Like if, if you're yeah, carrying on aging while you're travelling, how far back can you go then? Presumably you can't just live your whole life again repeatedly. Mm. That's a good point. Like, depending on... So let's take the Harry Potter example as an example. If Hermione, if Hermione turns the the time turner uh, 365 times in one day, does that make her a year older when she comes out the other side of it? Like, is she a year older oh. than she was when she started? But that's... Oh, I don't even know. I... This is why, this is why time is terrifying. Yes. So, I mean, so I think it'd be cool, but it I would think be it'd be really, really cool. Dangerous. It would be really, really dangerous in my yeah. jumping to the unknown. Yeah. No. Okay. So, looking at everything we've just talked about, which one, if any, <laughs> would you want for you? So yeah, which which superpower? Which I mean, we we already crossed most of them off the list. We pretty much crossed all of these off. Well, no, the there thing. are there are a couple. Flight and super speed. Flight and super speed. Like one, <laughs> one we didn't really too. mention that could have come potentially under invulnerability is like regeneration, mm-hmm. which I think would be yeah. really useful because that would obviously like you could Wolverine that slows the aging process. It allows yeah. for in his case some rather extreme body modification, um, <laughs> but he can still feel pain. So he still has all the memories of yeah. all of that pain, and that's what kind of messes him up a lot. Um, but I do think like regeneration. Is is probably one of the best ones. Um, although scientists would come for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, on the but plus side, you like, could potentially sell your blood for lots of money. <laughs> let's just say also that scientists will come for you if you have a superpower, no matter what. So this that's not really something to necessarily influence. But then again, there's something, there's something about that as well. Like you could be, you could be the savior, not the savior, but kind of like long life for all like donate your blood to medical science if it's something that's carried in the blood which I would imagine it probably would be um and then heal the human race yeah so regeneration is probably I I guess that could be something that I'd like um otherwise I like the speed the speed is good yeah the speed I think I'd take the speed. I thing. never actually thought... I, I, didn't, I didn't think that would be the case because I think about my favourite superheroes and I think... Um, actually, they're usually just really clever people like Tony Stark and Iron Man. 
Like, yeah, I love that man. <laughs> um, so the Flash, the Flash. No, I never really think about the Flash as like my, one of my favorite superheroes, but actually. His his power is one of the most useful, I think, and probably the least one of the least problematic. Um, provided that his body is capable to withstand the ridiculous pressures of super speed. Um, yeah, I, I like to see that. <laughs> yeah, but I think anything anything that's exaggerated too much in terms of time or intelligence is really dangerous, because anything that takes you too far away from your own humanity is ultimately going to ruin you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. How about you? What would, what would be your power? I think super speed. I'm thinking... Because I think it just sounds less stressful than flying. Um, in terms of practicalities. <laughs> in terms of practicalities. Um, and it's also probably I really better like for the running. environment. Yeah, I, I like running. So the idea of being able to run super fast is quite appealing. Um so yeah, I think that's 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 it. Um, yeah, the others just had too many cons. And this one, <laughs> this one seems. I have to, to be, say, like this has been quite quite a cynical and quite pessimistic really look at superpowers. Far more than we expected. Um, <laughs> this wasn't the route we intended to take. Yeah, but how about you folks? Like, let us know. <laughs> hit us up with your thoughts. What would be your superpower? If you could have one superpower. What would it be? Would you fire? Would you manipulate lightning? Magnetism. Um. Anything yeah, under yeah. the sun. Yeah, anything else? What else? What 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 do you want? What That's have we missed? What have we missed? Yeah, let us know. Hit us up in the comments and uh, yeah, we'll be back. We'll have another spoiler alert next Sunday. We'll be back with like normal normal service will resume. <laughs> um but yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Stick a thumb on it if you did. Uh don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a thing. And yeah, we'll catch up with you soon. See ya. Bye. Bye.